My mother committed suicide when I was 16 years old. Uh, a, uh, an overdose of sleeping pills, which she had tried many times before, but this time she succeeded. And my sister had called me. I was staying at a friend's house, and she said, uh, we can't wake mommy. Would you come home? I didn't think it was an emergency at all. And a friend of mine drove me home, and when I walked into the house and I found my mother on the floor, uh, I touched her forehead. And it was so cold that my hand just jumped off her forehead. And uh, f basically forever more, for 30 more years or more, anything that I would touch that was cold would bring me back to that moment. It was such an arresting shock. Uh, you know, put your hand uh, to open the refrigerator door and if my hand would just brush the refrigerator, uh, it would have that effect or fall asleep on an airplane against the cold window and, and feel the cold window on the back of my hand or uh, uh, put my hand into uh, under water, cold water to wash my hands. Anything like that, touching cold tiles on the floor uh, would bring back that, uh, that moment in, in a disturbing way. And I remember, you know, 10 years afterwards being aware of it every time it would happen and thinking, it's been 10 years, is this going to continue like this my whole life? And then 20 years later and 30 years later, and then I just gave up and thought, this is a, a trigger I'll have to deal with all the time. And somewhere in there, I moved to Fiji. And one of the things I loved so much is that everything was warm. So the floor was warm, the wood floor when you get up in the morning, and uh, the faucets when you turn on the sink were warm. And it was very rare that I got that particular trigger. It just didn't happen that much in a, in a warm climate. And I had a best friend in Fiji who was a man 20 years older than me. He was a doctor, spoke Greek and Latin. Uh, Rokothimbi was his name. And uh, I visited him often and would bring him books often and spend time with him and loved him dearly. And in the last week of his life, uh, I'd given him a book by the Dalai Lama called Advice on Dying. And for some reason, I thought he would die soon. And I remember crying in the car when I left that day, thinking I wouldn't see him again. I would see him one more time again, it turned out. Uh, but uh, about a week later, after I'd given him that book, uh, he died. And uh, as basically one of his sons, I was invited to participate in the whole process of going to the hospital morgue and getting the body and dressing the body and, uh, and then bringing him back to the house for, uh, for the burial and various ceremonies. And in the uh, hospital morgue room, just as you would imagine in a movie or a TV show, they opened the long drawer and, and his sons lifted him out onto a table and they were all adult sons. We were all dressed formally and uh, we dressed him. And then they stood around the table and they sang this tremendously powerful song, a, a deep tradition and ceremony in it, and all of them singing full-throated in, uh, in this concrete uh, room at the morgue. And, you know, I, I knew that I was uh, an adopted son and not a real son, and I didn't know Fijian culture all that well. Pardon me for a second. So I just watched them and, you know, wondered what it is I'm supposed to do. And uh, there was no call on my participation. Uh, I didn't know the song and I don't sing that well anyway. And I just watched. And as he was laid out, uh, I saw a frost on him. I mean, he literally was frozen from the freezer. And, uh, and then singing this powerful song, one at a time, the sons would come forward to this table that he was on and, uh, and kiss him on the forehead and then go back into the choir line and then another would come forward and kiss him on the forehead. And I thought, oh, 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 that's my participation. I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to kiss him on the forehead and uh, colder even than that shocking moment with my mother. And then I, I looked at him, his body, and I thought, ah, you are going to heal this for me. You're going to heal this for me today. And it came my turn to come forward to him, and I did. I came forward, and I put my hand on his chest, and I kissed him on the chest. And then I moved up and kissed him on the forehead. 
and I stepped back and that song was playing so powerfully and uh, lifted from me forever was that trigger of cold things, uh, a, a cold drink of water or a cold environment or something you touch that's cold. It, it all has no association that is disturbing at all to me. And, uh, and when I hear that song, uh, this tremendously powerful song that they sang, uh, a new association has come from that, which is how he gave me this tremendous healing among so many other gifts. Too big. 